In the late 1990s, a couple of media researchers got interested in whether local television news broadcasts were accurately depicting the racial breakdown of murder victims. We're going to look at some data from that study in order to, to learn how to do a one-sample chi-square test. To address the question they were interested in, the researchers gathered 139 uh, randomly selected and therefore representative television news broadcasts aired in the Los Angeles area. Again, this is during the late 1990s. And here they are. You, there, you can see there's one row for each of the 139 stories. In the data set, column A simply gives us, gives us an ID number for each story, story 1, story 2, story 3, and so forth. Column B gives us the race of the victim featured in that story. Uh, the, the race could be coded as either white or black or Latino or other. So for example in story one the victim featured was some other race. In story number two the victim featured was white. In story number three the victim featured was black and so forth. Now the very first thing we would need to do in order to address the question of whether local these, these broadcasts accurately reflect the racial breakdown of murder victims is count up how many of each kind of story we have. In other words, how many stories feature a victim who was white, how many feature a, a victim who was black, how many feature a victim who was Latino, and how many feature a victim who is some other race or races. We could do that manually by hand uh, by simply counting the number of others, the number of whites and blacks and so forth, but it would take a long time and we would probably make a, a mistake along the way. It would be much better to have Excel do this for us. Excel can do it faster and much more accurately than we could. Fortunately, there's an easy way to get Excel to do that. Begin by clicking anywhere in the data you want to deal with. I usually click somewhere in the nearest column. I'll go with uh, cell B2 here. And then click the Insert tab, and then click on the Pivot Table icon. When you do that, you get this Create Pivot Table dialog box. And if you want to, you can take all the defaults here. I like to change one thing. I like to change where Excel is going to show the results of the analysis so that the results will show up in the same place as the data that I'm working with. So I'm going to change this uh, choose where you want the pivot table report to be, to be placed radio button to existing worksheet. And then I'm going to click in the location box right here and click where in the spreadsheet I want the, the table to show up. Let's go with cell D2 right here next to the, to the study data and then click OK and that opens up this pivot table dialog box. Now filling out this dialog box is pretty easy. It's just a drag and drop kind of operation. I'm going to grab the race vari variable right here. I'm just going to uh, hover my mouse over it, hold down the left mouse button and drag it down to the row labels box right here and then let go of the mouse. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but this time put the variable in the in the values box right next to the row labels box. And you can see that while I was doing that, Excel was building this nice little table. And this table tells us that there are 32 news stories that feature a black victim, 26 that feature a Latino victim, 21 that feature a victim of some other race, and 60 that feature a victim who was white for a total of 139. So that easily and that quickly, Excel has given us what we were wanting, which is a breakdown of, of how many uh, victims of each type were portrayed in the television news broadcasts. Now here's where things get interesting. When the researchers checked actual crime statistics for Los Angeles during the time period covered by their sample, here's what they found. I'm going to go ahead and type this here so we can keep things straight. Um, in terms of the actual percentage of, of murder victims in LA who were black during that time period, it was 28% or 0.28. And in terms of the percentage of Latino victims, it was 0.54 or 54%. Others accounted for 5% or 0.05. And white victims accounted for 13% or 0.13. Now let's do something else. Suppose that we apply these percentages to the 139 stories. In other words, if the 
television news broadcasts were accurately reflecting the racial breakdown of murder victims, we would expect 28% of the 139 stories to feature black victims, 54% of, Latino, of, of the 139 stories to feature Latino victims, 5% to feature victims of some other race, and 13% to feature victims who were white. If, if that were the case, we would get these kinds of counts. We would, uh, I can actually have Excel do this for me, start with an equal sign, uh, take 0.28 and multiply it by the total number of stories, 139, and enter, and you get 38.92, or basically 39 stories. Uh, this being Excel, we can repeat that calculation pretty easily for the other categories. Just highlight the cell that has the formula in it, grab that little square in the lower right corner, and drag down across the other two, uh, or the other three race categories, and let up on the mouse. And we can see that, um, again, if the coverage matched the actual percentages in crime statistics, we would expect there to be 39 stories about black victims, 75 stories about Latino victims, uh, basically 7, 6.9, 7 if you round up, stories about people of uh, victims of some other race, and about 18 stories about people who were white. So obviously there are some differences between our sample of 139 television news stories and what we would expect to find in those news stories based on actual crime statistics. For example, in our sample of 139 stories, we found 60 stories that featured a victim who was white. But based on actual crime statistics, we would expect to find only 18 stories about victims who were white. So is there misrepresentation going on here, or are these differences just random? In other words, we're dealing with a random sample of 139 cases. We wouldn't expect that sample to match reality exactly. We would expect some difference due to the fact that we're just dealing with a sample of cases. But could the difference that we see here be too big to be explainable just by that kind of random variation? And if it's not explainable by that kind of random variation, maybe there's something systematic going on. In fact, that, that's, that becomes the most, poss the most likely explanation for the difference. So that's what a chi-square test can do. It can tell us whether this difference is random or whether it's too big to be attributable to mere randomness. Let's learn how to calculate one. I'm going to start by uh, typing in a label for the chi-square test. Let's just call it uh, chi-square, no matter room, let's do probability down here. Chi-square probability. And here in cell E10, I'm going to type the, the function that will give me the chi-square probability based on the counts that we have here. It starts with an equal sign, like all Excel functions. And we start out typing chisq, and then a period, and then test, and then a left parenthesis. And the first range of data I need to highlight is the actual range, the, the, the range that I observed, in this case, the range I observed in my sample. So that would be these right here. I'm just dragging over these with a the mouse and highlighting them. And then type a comma. And now I need to highlight the expected range. In this case, what I would expect to see based on the, on the crime statistics. Just like that. And then finally finish with a right parenthesis. And hit enter. Now when I hit enter, here's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get the probability that the difference that we see here between what we saw in our sample of 139 cases and what we would expect to see based on the crime statistics, we're going to get the probability that that difference could be explained by mere chance variation alone. If that's a really small probability, then odds are it's not explainable by randomness, which means there's something systematic going on. Okay, here we go. Let me hit enter. And we get a really weird looking number. If you've never seen scientific notation before, this is going to be kind of confusing for you. Let me explain what's going on here. The number is 3.02007 and then an E and then a minus sign and a 3 and a 4. Uh, it doesn't look like any number you would typically see. But what is going on here is this number is really, really tiny, really, really small. And it's instead of showing you a really, really large a uh, small number, a number that's large but has a uh, small but has a large number of digits, Excel is expressing that number in scientific notation. Uh, first of all, look at the minus 34 there. What that means is that there's a decimal place and then 33 zeros to the right of that decimal place. And then finally, on the in the 34th place, 
we have 3 and then a 0 and then a 2 and a 0, 0. In other words, this number is 0 0.000000, etc., 33 times, and then finally, in the 34th place to the right of the decimal, 30200. That's really, really tiny. Um, how tiny does it have to be to suggest that, that there's a, um, the, 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 that the difference here is, is non-random? Uh, well, it has to be 0.05 or less, and this is a whole lot less than 0.05. In other words, we'll, we'll, we're willing to tolerate up to a 5% probability that randomness could explain the difference that we're looking at. Uh, in this case, the probability that randomness could explain this difference is a whole lot less than 0.05. So, uh, so what we can conclude now, and what the researchers concluded, is that local television newscasts, at least in LA during the late 1990s, really did tend to misrepresent, misrepresent the, um, the racial breakdown of murder victims in, in, in that area. They tended specifically to overemphasize stories, to overplay stories in which the victim was white, and to uh, underplay stories in which the, uh, the, the victim uh, was a member of some minority race. So that's an illustration of how to compute and interpret a one-sample chi-square test. Now here's a look at how to tell when a one-sample chi-square test is the appropriate test for the situation you're in. Thinking about the, sto the, the study we just looked at, how many variables were there? Well, there were two variables in the data set. Remember, there was the ID number identifying each individual story. And then there was the second variable there in column B, indicating the, the race of the murder victim who had been featured in that particular story. So there are two variables in the data set, but the analysis really only dealt with one of those variables. It dealt with a variable about race. So right away, we, uh, we have the choice between how many variables are there, one or two. Well, there was only one variable that we were really concerned with for the, for the analysis. Now, what type of variable was it? Well, it, it was either categorical or continuous. A categorical variable is a variable that basically sorts things into different categories of things, uh, two or more categories at least. A continuous variable measures some phenomenon on a continuous scale. That would mean a scale that can be put in in a numerical order from lowest to highest and also a scale where the, uh, the, the distance between any two points, any two adjacent points on the scale is the same. So, for example, uh, um, age is a continuous variable because the, the difference between being one year old and being two years old is the same amount of time as the difference between being two years old and being three years old. Plus, you can, you can order that scale. Um, you can, uh, uh, being one year old is being younger than being two and being two is being younger than three and so forth. Uh, in the case of the variable we were dealing with, the race of the victim featured in the newscast, it's not continuous. You can't put race on any kind of a, of a continuous scale. You can't say, well, you know, b blacks are more something than whites, who are more something than Hispanics, who are more something than others. Rather, it's just a matter of sorting the, the murder victims featured into different categories. This, this victim was white, this victim was black, this victim was, was Latino, this victim was something else. Uh, so we were dealing with a categorical variable in that analysis. So we were dealing with one variable, and that variable was categorical, so that's how we knew to do a one-sample chi-square test.